Next up, at UFC 300, we have the latest addition to the card. The newest fight added to this card is Jalen Turner taking on Hinato Moicano. Jalen Turner, 14. And seven overall, three and two in his last five. He is coming off that knockout win over Bobby Green. He's taking on Hinato Moicano, 18 and five overall, four and one in his last five. He's coming off that decision win over Andrew Dober. And this is an interesting fight because Jalen Turner is a nasty striker. He's very long. He's very tall. He uses that well. He's got plenty of power, good footwork. He can move forward while counter-striking at the exact same time. He's got laser pinpoint accuracy and true one-punch knockout power. He also has plenty of submissions. Three of his last five wins are by submission. And a lot of that, he snatches things up and scrambles and he seizes opportunities. Jalen Turner's very well-rounded guy. The problem, though, Jalen Turner has quite literally never won a decision. Never won a decision. And that does concern me here because Hinato Moicano, while he has been knocked out plenty of times, he is a pretty durable guy. He started his career as a grappler, came forward, decent takedowns, nothing fantastic, but decent takedowns and very, very good, very dangerous jujitsu. Over the years, he has evolved his striking. He doesn't really have any power at all, but he does good technical striking where he can hang at least on the technique side. The power side, it's just not there. He has shown us in multiple fights that he doesn't even need a takedown to get a submission like against Brad Riddell. He does not shoot in takedowns. He doesn't really create scrambles. But he is a guy that will come forward, take his punishment, and try to win that fight. I do think Jalen Turner wins this fight. I think Jalen Turner is going to be too fast. I think he's going to hit too hard. My one and only concern is that Jalen Turner has never won a decision. If he starts to fade and Moicano starts to take over, it could be an annoying, frustrating fight to watch. With that being said, Hanano Moicano only beat Drew Dober because Drew Dober made a mistake. And he capitalized on it, so good for him. So I do think this is a bit of a mismatch. Even if you look at Jalen Turner's losses, I mean, they're they're pretty quality losses in good back-and-forth fights. I think Jalen Turner... Far better striker, way too much power, should be long enough and control the distance enough and touch up Moicano enough on his way in to keep this fight standing and win this fight. Jalen Turner is going to be the pick, but I do hope he gets him out of there early so I don't have to bite my nails wondering if he can win his first ever decision. What do you think, Jakey boy? There's your tarantula autographed card. What do you think, Jakey Bombalotes? I got the card in. I got got a card in, everyone. There you you go. The tarantula. That's actually an awesome card with an awesome... uh, Tarantula is a cool signature, yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I agree. J- Jalen Turner is, he, I mean, this dude's fucking good. And, and I tried to m- not make a case for Bobby Green in the last fight. I think a lot, everyone was pretty much on Jalen Turner. But I said, I don't know if he's going to finish a guy like Bobby Green because I don't I don't know if I see, like, killer instinct in Jalen Turner. I, and that's, this was me talking more before his last fight. Like, he he has all these finishes, but it just seems like he's just like a— just a very easygoing, kind of casual type of fighter, and I just wish I could see that next level of fire. And then all of a sudden, I saw him knock Bobby Green down and then decide, I think I want to fucking kill this guy on the ground. So I saw that killer instinct that I love. This is this should be a, a, a cut and dry fight. This should be, an, a, I don't want to say an easy fight for Jalen Turner, but his striking abilities is just going to be so dominant against a guy like Morcano. Morcano came in against Drew Dober and needed every second of control time to win that fight because he was such a liability on the feet at times in that fight he is a tough dude but against Jalen Turner it doesn't sometimes it doesn't matter how fucking tough you are this guy hits really really hard and even on the ground he, he is a dangerous guy I'm not saying he should grapple with a guy like Moicano if Moicano ends up in a scramble and gets his back or something it's it's probably not gonna be a good situation but he knows what he's doing on the ground he can survive if he gets taken down I don't think he's gonna get taken down though and he's just gonna be, use that length that distance and, and, and snipe a guy that really kind of stays on the center line in the striking so I, I like Jalen Turner here um you know, more kind of, it's always going to be live. It goes to the ground, but uh, I don't, I don't see it there. And on the feet, I think he's, I think he's in trouble. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's interesting because Jalen Turner should be the far better fighter here. And this comment stuck out 14 and seven. He seems so much better than his record. That is exactly what I think every time I see Jalen Turner's right. I agree. Seven losses is a lot because when you watch him fight, like this guy is freaking good. And you don't get those vibes from Hanato Moicano. Hanato's been, he's more popular now than he's ever been before. He worked his way in the UFC 300 card because he played his post-fight interview perfectly. And good for him. I mean, 
fighting will you will not be able to retire off the money you make fighting unless you're the like one percent everybody else has to build another career for themselves and that's what Hanato is doing so good for him uh he'll get a nice bag here he's building a nice little fan base he got the money nickname but uh, i just don't think it's going to be enough eighty nine hundred dollars in DraftKings for jalen turner if he wins he will cover that because jalen turner finishes people and puts up some very real numbers are you going to put him in your lineup jakey boy yeah i think that might be one of the better value eighty eight thousand nine hundred dollar values uh on the card honestly i uh complete oop, i complete i meant to unstar that i'm not pinning that christian um i think we're aligned on this one and if you want to align yourself with some of the best picks tools bets and stuff in the game go to we want picks.com click become a member at the top it's only ten dollars for an entire month there are other services out there we are not the only ones. We are the ones, though, who gave you the most robust offering. You're going to go find other people. 99% it's a Patreon. Then there's a, a handful of people that have taken the time to build a website. Most of them load slow and they suck. And then most of them have, here's my betting stuff, $10. Here's my DFS stuff, $20. But if you put it to no games, no bullshit. This sport is tricky enough. We appreciate the fans and we are in the volume business. Well over 3,000 members. $10 for an entire month's worth of access. Not just this card, but every card in that month. We want picks.com. Click become a member at the top. Someone asked when I'm fighting Artem. I would. Phew. Oh, you'd smoke Artem. Dude, oh, every week, and Artem is watching every fucking week. Artem has, oh, I, I'm I'm unwell. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do my article this week. I'm unwell. Oh, I'm moving flats, Angelo. Oh, I have to study for my finals and whatever Kiwi terms they use for all these things. He's always got some bullshit going. Oh, I can't. You know what the last excuse was? And you're watching Artem, so you better either be laughing or crying. Those are the only two acceptable reactions. The last time Artem sent me a message... It was like, I'm not going to be able to to write the article. I have a Frisbee golf tournament. I have a Frisbee. I made it to the finals of the Frisbee golf tournament. That's your boy. That's not me. That's what not a me. fucking joke, dude. Frolf. Artem Frolf. Uh, Mr. Tikids. Oh, speak of the devil. We know what's going on here. Yeah. So he, he said be, I'd look uh, good with nipple piercings. I'd be 15 years younger. I had a nipple piercing. Only one, not both. I'm not a freak. I had uh, one single nipple pierced. I got it pierced on the Jersey Shore when I was uh, 19. Damn it, I keep... When I was 19 years old. And um, then my Showed immigrant off. mother... My Stick immigrant your mother... The hole. <laughs> it's gone. My immigrant mother ripped it out in the kitchen. I was with my friend in the kitchen and he thought he would be funny and he pulled up my shirt and he goes, look, to show my mom. And my mom just looked at me and goes, boom, and just ripped it out. So I bet that you that's how that, that went pierced. I bet you kept that thing pierced secretly. I bet you could still. It's just, I just have a, a, a 40 year old man with two young daughters and a pierced nipple well, living in the burbs. That would be a wild my pool ears day. Are still still uh, pierced. How do you know? When was the last time you put something in there? Uh, like last week. You just wore earrings last week. Like it was fucking no, 2006. Just, just threw them in. Sometimes, studs you know, studs sometimes from you, claire's sometimes you claire's in, studs tuck, uh, <laughs> tuck the sack back stare in the mirror <laughs> the little fruit basket little fruit basket action if angelo, you guys don't know what a I mean, fruit basket on, is angelo <laughs> i'm not gonna explain a fruit basket i mean if you guys ask maybe i will but i'm not gonna explain that right now before you go let me give you 50 dollars anybody who goes to wewantpicks.com slash bets and signs up with any one of our affiliate partners gets $50 as a thank you. Use the link, sign up, make a deposit. We send you 50 bucks as a thank you.